Hello sports fans, I'm Harry and I'd like to welcome you to Harry's Stuff and Such. Today I'm going to be installing the Olsen Ruby nozzle onto my original Pooser i3 Mark III. So stick around and let's see how I do it. And welcome back. So as I said in the intro, today I'll be installing the uh, Olsen Ruby nozzle onto my original Pooser i3 Mark III. I'm replacing the, the stock .4 nozzle with the .4 Olsen Ruby nozzle. So without any further ado, why don't we start s installing this little puppy. Let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I did was, of course, turn on the uh, Mark III, and then I raised the uh, extruder all the way up to the top of the z-axis. Also I started heating the nozzle. Uh, I set it at 225. And so I need to go ahead and remove the uh, fan shroud, for the, or at least the part cooling sh fan shroud. So I need to go ahead and remove that first. Be very careful when you're doing this and not touch hot nozzle. I'd like to point out that while I'm at this point that this nozzle is extremely hot, it's at 225 degrees C and it will mark you if you touch it. And so as I said be very careful and I'm not suggesting that you do this, I'm just showing you how I'm doing it. If you do decide to replace this nozzle you do it at your own risk. All right, so that is a seven millimeter nozzle. So I'm going to use a seven millimeter driver to unscrew it. And when, when you're doing this, you're going to have to secure the heater block. So you're going to have to un, so you either use a um, uh, an open it and wrench or an adjustable wrench or a pair of pliers but you're going to have to hold on to the heater block. So I'm going to try to grab it from behind if I can. And the other thing is be very careful not touch any wires as well. Alright, let's see if I can get my driver up there. There we go. And so be very careful when you're dropping, unscrewing the nozzle, because if it drops on you, it will burn. I'm trying to be careful as well and not strip anything. Another reason this is why I like using this is another reason I like using these drivers is that it hang on, held on to the nozzle. If I had used a um, box in or open end wrench uh, I would have had to catch the nozzle in, in something but at least with the driver it's secured in the uh, driver mouth. It's still very hot so be careful when you're setting. In, in fact it's already warming this shaft up here quite a bit so you need to be very careful where you place this after you get the nozzle out. Okay, so here's the Ruby nozzle that I'm replacing it with. So it's kind of nice that I can, oh, using the driver as well, I guess I can place the, I can place the Ruby inside the driver mouth as well. So I'm just going to get it started and then I'll tighten it. Tighten it. So be careful. Don't strip anything. Be very careful and don't strip anything out. Okay. 
All right, so I've got it in. Now I need to tighten it. Now Olsen has a recommended tightness of, um, or torque, uh, of 0.5 Newton meters, uh, but to not tighten it to any, uh, torque it any greater than one Newton meter. I don't have a torque wrench, so, or at least I don't have a micro torque wrench. And so I'm going to be very careful tighten this because you will break it. So now that I've got the nozzle secured, I'm going to feed some P PLA through to see if there's any leakage around the uh, heater block in the nozzle. So let me set the temperature for PLA. Okay, so as you can see, the filament is out. I don't see any seepage around the nozzle, but I will double check that. So, double, so to double check to make sure there's not any seepage, I'm going to extrude some filament. And I am seeing no seepage around the nozzle. which is good. That's exactly what I wanted. Now there is another step. Just because you've got the nozzle in doesn't mean you're ready to print. I'm going to have to recalibrate uh, because of replacing the nozzle. I'm probably going to have to uh, change the position of the sensor, pinna sensor as well. Okay, so now that um, it's cooled a little bit, I'm going to be moving the pinna nozzle down a little bit. So first I'm going to have to loosen it. I'm not trying to force, I'm be very careful. I'm trying to put a blade screwdriver, just open the mouth up just a little bit so I can push it down some more. Okay, so now that I've got the sensor moved down to where it's below the tip of the nozzle, I'm going to move the z-axis down some. Okay, so now that the uh, nozzle has been installed, I have to readjust the pinna sensor because it uh, nozzle height is a little bit different. Uh, anytime you put a different nozzle on, you're going to have to uh, do this adjustment. So basically, you go back to the pre-flight check in the um, uh, instruction manual of the kit <clears throat> when you were putting it together. So what you will need to do is go back to the instruction manual and go to the pre-flight checklist. And so you'll need to loosen the pinner probe, uh, move it um, down. And you can use a screwdriver if you need to uh, place in a blade screwdriver to place into the slot to open it up a little bit so that the pinna sensor will move a little bit better. Uh, I, it's real hard for me to show you that. But basically you go through the exact same setup as you did in the pre-flight check. So first thing is you move the um, uh, extruder all the way to the left side first. Um, go through making sure that the nozzle is just barely touching the plate, move it all the way across. In this case, I, since I was overly concerned about the ruby nozzle, I placed a little sheet of paper up under 
just to barely make sure that it was uh, touching that paper as opposed to and that way I could pull the paper just out. And I moved it all the way to the right, just like the manual says, then you move it back to the center, and then you get the um, pinna positioned w using a zip tie, just like we did in the, in the manual, and you adjust its height. And so once that is at the proper height, then you're good to go to tighten up the pinna. Uh, as I was talking about the zip tie, you just come back in here, place it up under the pin to make sure that they've got room there and it's just enough. So now I can tighten up the pinna and then go back through the XYZ calibration. Now that the probe has been adjusted and everything is set, I'm ready to do the XYZ calibration. I'm not going to do a complete calibration, so I'm not going to go through the wizard. I'm just going to go down to, to calibration then down to the calibrate XYZ and select that option. Remember, you need that sheet of paper. It's just like the first calibration. Okay, so the calibration is finished. It came out with the correct results. So congratulations, you were perpendicular. So now I'm going to try to do, um, adjust the um, live Z. So I'll do a first layer calibration test. There you have it. I've completed installing the uh, Olsen Ruby nozzle onto my original Pusser i3 Mark III. So to recap on the process, so first thing you need to do is to heat up the um, hot end and of course remove the filament. And once the hot end is heated, uh, then you can loosen the old nozzle. Now I heated my nozzle up to 225 degrees C and then I used a 7 millimeter uh, nut driver in order to remove the nozzle. Now you'll need to secure, like I did, in some manner, you'll need to secure the uh, heat block so it doesn't rotate. Uh, if, you do, if you don't, you might break your um, heating block and you don't want to do that. So you need to, I secured it with a pair of pliers. You could use a pair of channel locks or a, a adjustable wrench, uh, whatever you have available. Um, also be very careful because it is a hot nozzle. And I'm not suggesting that you change your nozzle. I'm just showing you what I did for my Mark III. Also, once you've got the old nozzle out, be very careful because it's still hot. And then you'll carefully take the Ruby nozzle and using the same seven millimeter nut driver or wrench, whichever one you have, you'll need to um, screw back in the uh, Olsen Ruby. Now, as an alternative, you could let the uh, uh, block cool down and then just screw it in by hand until it's hand tight and then heat the nozzle up because you need to heat the nozzle up before you finish the tightening or else what will happen is filament will extrude around the top of the nozzle instead of out through the uh, nozzle jet. But you be very careful when you're tightening this Ruby nozzle. Now Olsen Ruby has a recommendation of 0.5 Newton meters of torque on tightening and they recommend no more than one newton meter of torque. So be very careful because you can twist it off and break it. Uh, then once you've got the uh, 
nozzle finished and installed, you'll have to go through the uh, pre-flight uh, checklist again and take take it down and recalibrate your XYZ because you've changed the nozzle. Uh, if you built this from a kit, you're familiar doing that. That's section nine in the uh, instruction manual of the kit, uh, the pre-flight test. And you'll have to, uh, that's basically setting up the, the sensor, bed leveling sensor so that uh, it uh, knows where uh, home is in the z-axis. If you did not buy the kit but purchased the completely assembled uh, Mark III, then you can go online and look at the instruction manual on how to do that. Also, this is the first print that I did, the first benching, and it turned out quite well. So uh, I'm pleased with the nozzle thus far, and now I can uh, print some more exotic materials, some uh, polycarbonate, maybe some nylon, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'll keep you up to date on what I think about the Olsen Ruby nozzle. But as it stands now, I'm enjoying it, even though I've only got the one print. That's it. If you uh, liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But uh, in any case, how about leaving a comment on what you thought I did wrong or what you think I did correctly? Or even a comment on what you would like to see me improve or what you might like to see me do in another video. Uh, in any of those cases, how about pressing that subscribe button? I'd really appreciate that. And I want to thank those that have already subscribed. I really appreciate that. So until next time, I'm Harry, and this is Harry's Stuff and Such, and you guys take care, and I'll catch you on the backside.